bottling some beer for Tommy. Uh, he would made a beer called Synergy for the Michael Jackson Beer Club. And at the time, he didn't have a production brewery, so um, he asked if he could bring up the 20 kegs or whatever it was quantity, and we bottled it. Our brewery bottle conditioned it because we had all the equipment to do that stuff, uh, which, which now Tommy has. But at the time, um, he, was, he was short of that. So, um, and Dave Keene, the owner of the Tornado, came up and uh, helped us. And that night, we were eating dinner in our pub, and, and Dave, Dave said to me, well, I, you know, like you to, you know, would you want to make my 20th anniversary beer? Which this was back in 2005, so the Tornado was just 17 years old, going on 18. So we had about two and a half years to come up with an idea, and uh, I, <laughs> uh, I, I asked Dave, and, and, and the unique thing about the, uh, the whole concept was that we have kind of a brewing philosophy of, you know, one, use the best ingredients, uh, two, you know, always try to continue to improve our beers, learn, sometimes that's, uh, you know, and, and, and in my, the first point in that we're, you know, using the best ingredients with all of these beers today, one of the ingredients also includes barrels, so it's not just small pops, water, and yeast, there's, there's the, the aspect of, of barrels. Um, with, with the second point of, of trying to improve and, and always, you know, better what we do, this was a one-shot beer, so it wasn't like if we brewed it and screwed it up, we could make it again, because it, you know, it's a 12 to 18 month aging in the barrel, so there was a, there's a lot of it that goes into it. Uh, and, and then the, the third point is, and it's quite simple, and Tommy probably lives by this rule too, is never make a beer that you wouldn't drink yourself. And in this case, though, we were making a beer for someone else, uh, luckily, Dave's a, a dear friend of ours, and uh, he and I have quite similar tastes in beer, so I didn't think that was going to be a problem. So, so with that out of the way, uh, I, I did ask Dave, I said, well, what do you want? And he, he gave me three criteria. He said he wanted it to be dark, he wanted it to be funky, and he wanted it to be barrel-aged. And that was, that was all he gave me, was, was those three criteria. Along the way, once we started talking more, he did, he did ask for a little higher alcohol. Uh, he wanted something that would age really well, which uh, this is now a couple years old, and it certainly does age well. So that was the beginning of it. Once, once we started thinking about it, I started with the idea of, well, instead of just making one beer, and then Dave and I going through and picking the best barrels and making that the blend, I, I decided to make five different beers. And so this, this beer is actually started with five different components. Uh, the first being a Belgian style quadruple that fermented to 12% alcohol and uh, it was aged in, uh, some of you may know the beers from Firestone Walker, they're here tonight, they make a beer called Double Barrel Ale and 20% uh, or so of that beer is fermented in new American oak in the primary fermentation, it's kind of a, a Burton Union type system that they have going down in the central coast of California in the town of Paso Robles. So Matt Reynolds and their, their brewer gave, gave us some barrels we aged the first component in, in these used Firestone Walker barrels. And, and Dave Keene was a part of this beer all the way through. He was there when we brewed it. He was there when we filled the barrels of all the different batches. We tasted it along the way. Um, so the second and third component were uh, Belgian uh, strong dark ales, slightly lower in alcohol, 8 9% alcohol. Uh, those were done in mostly neutral wood, but barrels that we'd used before, so they already had a lot of the the, the Britannomyces, the Lactobacillus, and Pediococcus. And for those of you that don't know what those are, the Britannomyces is a very aggressive yeast. Um, as I was saying last night at the event we did at RFD, a lot of people call it one wild yeast. The, that's just wine makers that call it wild yeast because they're afraid of it. Um, I, I was telling the other guys on stage that we should no longer call Britannomyces wild because it's, it's, it's Tommy and I both know we've used it in 100%. Britannomyces beers, where we don't use any conventional yeast, and if you didn't know it, you wouldn't even know it was 100% bread. So, so that's when you hear we're going to talk a lot about Britannomyces in this hour, and then Lactobacillus and Pediococcus are both bacteria that naturally sour the beer, and depending on how much you hit add and how long you let it sit, will give you the degrees of, of sourness. So, so the, the second and third components were used barrels that already were impregnated with bread, lacto, and pedio. And then the uh, fourth component was uh, the uh, base beer called Synambic, which is basically our term for spontaneously fermented beer. It's a contraction between Sonoma and Lambic that we came up with. <laughs> and, and we'll be drinking that later with the application. 
And then the fifth component was our 100% red beer. That, and, and each one of these components had a purpose uh, for the beer. The, the cinnamic was there pretty much to raise the acidity of the beer. The 100% uh, the, the red beer was there really to mellow things out just in case we had too much uh, dark color that we needed to soften up. So, so that was the general idea of the five components. We brewed those, we put them in the barrel. Uh, after four months, the first component, using the first walking barrels, we actually uh, had to take it out of barrels and put it into some neutral, uh, or some new, well, new to us, but they were pretty neutral from the wine and Merlot barrels, because the, the wood character from these Firestone Walker barrels, when, when winemakers get barrels, they're different toast levels. So you can have medium toast, medium plus toast, heavy toast, heavy plus. I mean, it's, it's so, Firestone uses these super heavily toasted American oak barrels. And, and the flavor was just over the top just after four months. So we actually pulled it out of barrels, blended in 25% of the uh, non-barrel aged uh, component one to actually soften it up and still have this massive uh, oak character and toasted flavor. And uh, so that was, that was sort of the, the life of it. It came down to blending it. Dave came up one uh, Sunday and we sat in a little cider in our pub and, and I just laid out all these beers and sat there and wrote down percentages and, and came up with what would be the, the final blend, uh, which, which is a, dis a disproportionate blend between the five different components. Uh, the bulk of the beer was the, uh, that quadruple, so that's where we got a lot of the alcohol from. Uh, I can't remember, I think it's 10 and 3 quarter percent. It's pretty, pretty high up in alcohol. 10.43. 10 uh, uh, if you've been to the Tornado, you know the door. Uh, if you're sitting inside the Tornado, and that's what that drawing is of. And, and it was amazing because I already had that drawn up from a friend of ours. I was working on another project that I wanted to kind of pay homage to the Tornado, what a great bar it was. And when Dave asked me to do this, I said, well, hey, I already have a logo for the, uh, for, <laughs> for, for the beer. And so the package came together quite, quite easily, quite simply. Um, so, so with that in mind, Dave and I sat there for about two hours and, uh, and two hours of, of drinking all these high alcohol beers. Uh, Dave he looks at me and he goes, we, we, we still have to work. I'm like, yeah, we still have to, you know, work a forklift and to bring barrels out, blend, and do all the stuff. So it was a, it was a full day of uh, blending and then we, we bottled it the next day. But the, uh, like I said, the base was a lot of the, the Firestone barrel beer, the component one. Uh, the, the second and third component um, added just a, a lot of volume to the beer. Um, the, the beer, when, when you age beers that are this dark, sometimes it's hard to get acidity. Um, so, we, so we added, we used the, our spontaneously fermented beer, which is super, super acidic, which we'll see later. So we used that to add acidity to the beer, and then we used the fifth component to actually bring the color down a little bit to where we wanted it. So that's, that was kind of the life of the, the Toronado 20th anniversary. We only made 150 cases of this beer. I only had like four cases left, so this came out of Natalie, my personal seller. Um, Thank you. Dave, Dave has asked us to make his 25th anniversary beer, which is still three years away, so we'll start working on that in the next six months or so. We'll start putting some beer in the barrels. And uh, Tommy mentioned the cult-like status of some of these beers. Both the original cable car and the Toronado have been seen on eBay for about, I think it was 370 a bottle, which uh, means you wonder what we're doing. <laughs> Yeah, you guys may have noticed that we came around a second time with those bottles. <laughs> Thanks to uh, Vintage Generosity, uh, we're only instructed to pour no more than two.